Welcome to the Dental Billing Academy podcast, powered by eAssist Dental Solutions. Welcome to the Dental Billing Academy podcast, sponsored by eAssist Dental Solutions. I'm your host, Amanda Cross, and I have the distinct pleasure of hosting the very fabulous Lois Banta um, as my guest today. Hey, Lois. Hey, Amanda. It's so great to be your first guest, and I'm I'm excited to be here, and I'm also excited to be with the Assist, of course. Yes, well, thank you so much. Um, We are very excited. You have a wealth of knowledge that you can share with dental billers everywhere, so I am really excited to just dive in and kind of talk a little bit uh, about what you uh, have as far as guidance and advice uh, for dental billers, because that's what this uh, podcast is all about. Fantastic. Um, But First, I really want to start with uh, having you tell us a little bit about your background in the dental field. Well, it's an interesting story. I started um, in the dental industry back in 1978. I can't believe I'm saying that. Probably before you were born, Amanda. Uh, And I I was uh, hired as a Rover dental assistant. Now, back in high school, I had worked you know, part-time in a dental office while I was going to high school, filing charts and developing x-rays and answering the phone sometimes, sometimes escorting patients back. And I I liked it. I learned a lot. The dentist I worked with was fresh out of dental school. So he taught me a lot. And so off I went to go to college to be a music and uh, business major. (laughs) But I got out of college, I got married and I got out of college and I thought, huh, I think I want to go back and work in a dental office. So I got hired with a, an office in Duluth, Minnesota with three brothers, Amundsen, Amundsen, and Amundsen. And they hired me as the Rover dental assistant. <laughs> so I thought, hey, how hard could that be? I could be a dental assistant, no big deal. Well, it turns out I fainted at the sight of blood and I actually fainted three times in one week. And the first time I was assisting a procedure and the, um, it was a full mouth extraction to insert immediate dentures you know, trial by fire. So I, of course, fainted. They, I woke up in their recovery room and they're fanning me off. And so I, of course, not a giver upper and a stubborn Norwegian. I went right back in the next day to assist on a, I was a, I don't know, a crown prep or something. And um, he was giving an injection and there was a little blood. And the minute I saw that I fainted, woke up in the recovery room, third time's a charm. <laughs> I pre-fainted. I thought I was going to see blood. So I got so nervous. I fainted. (laughs) So obviously (laughs) clinical assisting was not the career choice for me. However, I learned to love the practice management side. So uh, fast forward 25 years, four different dental offices in two different states. I really graduated myself from working all departments on the practice management business side. And one of the things I got really, really good at is getting the money off the books and in the bank and filing insurance and and making sure detailed narratives were accurate and fighting with insurance companies to get the money off the books and in the bank. I loved it. I loved rolling up my sleeves and finding that lost money. I loved the challenge of finding out why insurance didn't pay something and why the patient didn't pay and why they how to prevent them from canceling their appointments, et cetera. So I really learned everything about managing a dental practice. And so in my last job, my, my boss's friends, because my boss was bragging about how good I was, would say, can you send Lois over to our office so she could teach us what she knows? And I did for free. About the fourth time I did it, I thought, hey, I think maybe that, that might be a company. So I joined an organization called the Speaking Consulting Network in 1998 and in 2000, quit my full-time job, ran a successful consulting business until this year where I was recruited by eAssist as the COO of eAssist. It's a natural fit. I have a love of finding that lost money and getting it off the books. So that's kind of my history in a nutshell. And oh, by the way, in 2010, I bought the Speaking Consulting Network. So now I teach people in the consulting, speaking, and writing profession how to have it as a business. Awesome. Well, that is just a great story. I love your stick to Um, even though it was making you queasy, I, I can absolutely relate. I'm sure so many um, dental billers out there can relate to that. That's why we work up front, right? The best dental billers 
are former clinical team members because they That's know true. the ins and outs of um, procedures and why procedures are performed and the importance of writing a, a good narrative and documentation. So clinical team members make the best dental billers. They really do. Um, so it really was, I mean, just a very natural progression for you going from uh, figuring out that you love doing the front desk administration into realizing that you were great at coaching and um, educating others on your best practices that you had seen in the office, um, things that had worked. And I agree, it is so satisfying to you know, fight those claims and get that money paid to the office, get that doctor what is rightfully owed to him or her and really help the practice succeed and move forward and grow um, by using your, you know, your natural strengths as a um, dental bulldog. A lot of us are, you know, as far as, far as getting that money paid uh, from the insurance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, it is because you almost have to be a pit bull. It, with, I always say a pit bull with an abundance of positivity, right? So make a friend at the insurance company kind of gets you further in the conversation, but you still have to have that stick to and stubbornness um, to get the right job done in an inefficient manner. Yes, you definitely attract more flies with honey, but then sometimes you do have to sting a little bit to get things pushed forward a little bit, right? You do. That's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so in your experience, um, coaching and helping all of these practices throughout all of these years, uh, what are the three key factors for a dental practice uh, that you find they need to have to be successful? And how do the dental billers in those practices really factor into ensuring that success for the office? They have to, um, first of all, hire and train the right people to work in the office. They have to identify really great systems, especially for the money part of running a business. It is a business. It, they're typically not a not-for-profit agency. So they have to not only be able to resolve um, uh, denials and appeals and outstanding claims quickly, they have to hire and train the right people. And if they their busyness factor is busy in such a way, then they have to recognize when it's time to outsource it to the right entity. Um, they also have to have really great communication skills. If you don't have communication skills and you have really effective systems, the systems fail. If you have really great systems, but you don't have people who know how to communicate very well, communication fails. And then they have to learn how to partner with the right people and the right companies to make sure that they have a flawless, uninterrupted business. So really just knowing exactly what to focus on and making sure that you're focusing in the right areas and kind of leaving any other tasks that are um, more um, necessary tasks, but don't uh, require the, the in-office front desk uh, team to really drive um, for the success of the practice to somebody else. The most successful practices have protocols in place to know when to outsource. And the reason I say outsource is such an important part of the cog in the wheel is that direct in-office patient communications, if a patient feels cared for and they feel communicated with, they're going to accept more dentistry. They're going to pay their balances more willingly. As a former practice administrator myself, I will tell you the hardest job I ever maintained working in an office was that behind the scenes, non-direct patient oriented um, functions of what I had to accomplish. I literally had to, it was like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. I had to find, navigate, choreograph the time to step away from the front desk. And the minute I did that to work on claims or call on outstanding balances or fill open appointments, that was the time that I couldn't extend personal in-office relationship opportunities with the direct patient that's right in front of me. It is so crucial. That patient, they don't pay attention to whether or not you're working behind the scenes. They pay attention to how, how uh, positive you were when they answered the phone. They pay attention to when they walked through the front door, did you greet them with a smile? They, they pay attention to the questions that they ask in office that can be answered in office. If they get their bill and they have a question, somebody's going to have to stop that direct patient communication 
and, and answer that question on the phone. If they have a question about their insurance claim and why insurance didn't pay, somebody's going to have to stop what they're doing in the office and manage that question behind the scenes, therefore removing the opportunity to really maintain that positive in-office, in-person relationship. I am very passionate about protecting the integrity of the in-office patient relationship. So important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a real struggle, um, I think, with dental billers everywhere is managing those priorities. You know that there are things, like you said, behind the scenes that are constantly needing to be done, hosting payments, insurance verifications, things that take up a lot of time and require um, being on the phone or um, not having enough free time for the patients and making sure that patient care is at its absolute best and increasing patient communication and, and things like that. Um, and then, you know, when a patient calls or is staying in front of you, having to decide, oh, I need to hang up this phone call where I've been on the phone with the insurance for 47 minutes, um, or I'm in the middle of posting all these payments and that really needs to get done um, and things like that. So it, it really is um, helpful to be able to outsource those skill-based um, processes in the office that are just needing to be done behind the scenes. So like you said, you can really focus on what grows a practice, which is, um, as we've all found out in our experience in dental offices, is the patient experience. Right. You know, the minute you have to um, do the non-direct patient oriented functions like filing claims, filing appeals, posting the payments, um, uh, verifying insurance benefits, the minute you have to take your focus away from that direct patient contact, then the patient um, perception can decrease of the quality of the office. No patient ever says worst dentist in town because they got a bad, bad crown prep right? They say worst dentist in town because I didn't feel cared for. I didn't feel like they paid attention to me and, and outsourcing what you don't have to do directly in front of a patient actually increases and enhances that opportunity to make the patient feel spoiled with information and spoiled with their dental care and spoiled with feeling cared for. Nobody loves going to the dentist, right? Nobody loves, nobody loves, and they come walking through the door, they're already apprehensive. So if we could take something off their plate, at, in the administrative department and help them protect that integrity of that relationship. That's a job well done and a win-win situation. Absolutely. And um, freeing up that time for that type of thing for the front desk and front office billers um, is a, a huge weight that I don't think um, many understand gets lifted off of them as far as, you know, needing to, to get all of those tasks completed when you can really just focus on the one area that truly grows the practice and give that your entire time and attention. And, you know, 99% of the time, that's why front office staff are front office staff because we are people people. <laughs> we love interacting with patients. We love talking to patients. We love building those relationships. So being given the license to really use almost all of your time in the office to do that, uh, really enhance a uh, practice and really set it um, on a path for success, get a good reputation, um, great reviews and things like that. Well, in today's dental industry, there's never been a more important time that to protect that integrity of that patient relationship. We've gone through hell and back. Can I say that word on this? <laughs> We've gone through. Sure. <laughs> is just uh, been, a, been a very frustrating, stressful year for the human race. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's so important to help the patient understand that we're still here for them while we're wearing all these gowns and masks and going through all these additional infection control protocols. It takes more time to prepare for the patient in that way. So I've been the two headed octopus with eight arms on roller skates. I'm working in a dental office. And that's why I picture every time I would come through those front doors, it's like, okay, I've got my suit of armor on today. And what am I, what fire am I going to have to put out today to make sure that I can still smile and greet the patient in a positive and friendly way. And it always went back to what kind of fires do I need to put out with those insurance claims or how many dollars do I have to post today? And, and 
making sure the money gets off the books and in the bank. It's a, it's a, a, a real balancing act sometimes to be able to work in the administrative department, get the job done and still smile at the end of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we are going to take just a quick sponsor break, but I am definitely excited to um, ask you a couple more questions and get some of your knowledge. So we will be right back. Thanks. This podcast is sponsored by eAssist Dental Solutions. eAssist helps dentists collect 100% of what dentists are owed by insurance companies. Their dental billing experts work with dentists and their teams to ensure the claim submission process is smooth and that dentists and their staff can focus on patient care. If you or someone you know is in need of assistance with the dental billing process, call 1-844-EASSIST or visit dentalbilling.com to find out more. All right, we are back with Lois Banta um, and Picking back up where we just left off, Lois, um, you just have so much knowledge to glean from um, in all of your experience with so many different offices and teams. Um, in, in all that experience, what do you feel like is the number one most common issue or roadblock that a dentist, dental office often encounters? You know, I think the main, the biggest roadblock that a dental office encounters is hiring very inexperienced people. Dentists need someone to work administratively. They don't have that um, constant all day in office contact with an administrative team like they do with their assistants or their hygiene team. So they get motivated to hire someone to work that front desk. All they have to do is answer the phones. How hard could it be? And the hair of the warm body. And so the inexperienced nature of the administrative team, the more inexperienced, the more mistakes get made. And so for me, that is the biggest roadblock that I see and I have seen as a consultant in a dental office when I, when I lecture and time after time, dentist after dentist comes up to me and says, I don't understand how I can get the right team on board. So it is a huge roadblock. And sometimes, uh, depending on the area, it's very difficult to find people that have the knowledge that you um, And then I know that that is a, a pain point for um, many office managers everywhere is having people um, be hired onto the front desk uh, team that require a lot of training or uh, come with zero knowledge uh, whatsoever. And then, like you said, a lot of mistakes can get made and then you can actually end up walking backwards in the, all the work that you've done to put your office on the path to success. Then yes. you're having to even do extra work coming behind someone and, um, helping to fix mistakes or, or clean up errors. You know, um, so that that couldn't be more true of a statement that you just said. And it's so, so crucial. The element of knowledge, understanding, proper training, proper onboarding. Uh, I call it a training and orientation period. It's not 90 day probation. You're not in prison. Although sometimes maybe you think you are, you feel like you are. <laughs> It's, an, it's a 90-day onboarding process where they test out their knowledge of the software system, that they test out their uh, phone answering skills, that they have a buddy maybe in the dental office that helps them through the process of what it takes to work in that specific dental practice. There are lots of ways for them to even get their software training just by putting in the software into training mode. And a lot of office managers maybe don't realize that. And right now during this um, COVID-19 pandemic situation, I am, it, it's an epidemic of trying to find qualified people to work, especially administratively. It is so, so hard to find quality people right now that have some sort of experience, if any at all. And I've always said, you, you know, I'm happy to train the right personality. I can train them skills. I can't train them to be a good person, right? But Exactly. That comes the learning curve and the time that it takes to properly bring someone in. You don't want to just dump them in an office, hand them a phone and say, don't mess this up because they'll mess it up every single time. Yeah, every time. Outsourcing comes in real handy because, um, you know, ESIS has this knowledge base. 
we get to celebrate the fact that we have so many people that are so smart and have so much experience, thousands of years, if you add it all up together, of experience that can help an office manager out of a tight situation of an inexperienced team. So is that um, the little bit of advice that you would give regarding this roadblock? And uh, what else, expanding on that, do you um, think, you know, is is the way, I guess, to overcome that um, lack of experience with front desk teams? How can you overcome the lack of experience or transitioning to possibly outsourcing is yes. realizing that you have an issue and being confident enough in the company you can refer out to, to get the job done, to, to get the job done behind the scenes, to keep the wheels moving forward. Believe it or not, what we need to be explaining to office managers is that frees them up to do proper training for a new team member that's inexperienced. Let's outsource the things to the knowledge base that can handle that. And in-office training for the person who can answer the phone and and handle the handoff and figure out um, estimated amount due, et cetera, in office. That's the perfect solution, in my opinion, of the epidemic that we have in unqualified or less experienced administrative teams. It's hard to find them right now. So, you know, I've even had clients, as you know, very recently, a client of mine reached out to me and he's completely feeling like he's underwater. His, he has too much open time. His, he's got a financial administrator that's get one, one foot out the door ready to retire, threatening every single day, and he's stressed. And so I let him know, well, ESIS can take that off your plate. We can do dental billing. We can do full schedule. We can. He's a fee-for-service practice, so he doesn't need credentialing. But he feels like he's swimming because he can't find qualified administrative team to take on the job. He's in a tiny part of Charleston called James Island. Well, that is a struggle. That's a struggle for him. Years of experience. And now because of this COVID pandemic situation, we're having a hard time finding qualified people. We are a natural resource for that. So something that is really uh, important to probably talk about, and I would love to get your advice on, um, is if you do outsource these skill-based um, duties in the office, um, how interacting with that outsourcing company would be like, what that would look like, um, you know, is that something that should make the front desk nervous at all or uh, feel insecure? Because I feel like that is something that we hold so closely to um, what we do in the practice that it can sometimes feel like outsourcing it is taking away a vital piece of how we contribute to the office. When in reality, like we spoke about before the break, um, the key um, component to success that front desk team members and dental billers, office managers can attribute to the office, um, making them invaluable is the patient experience and how they take care of the patients and make them feel when they're in the dental office. So if they are outsourcing the dental billing um, and other services that need to be taken care of on the back end, um, what type of things should they keep in mind when they are working with the outsourcing company? Well, they need to keep the lines of communication open. For instance, um, when a dentist chooses to outsource uh, some of the systematic um, insurance filing, posting, et cetera, to an outsourced company, they need to have a transparent conversation with the administrative team that we're partnering with eAssist. When there's a team change and eAssist is already working with that office, eAssist has these amazing kickoff calls when they get a new client on board. They need another kickoff call anytime there's an administrative team change. And the reason for that is perception drives reality for the person who is perceiving it. So if the new person coming on board administratively is very um, timid or uh, curious or maybe even suspicious about that outsourced company, that's gonna, that's gonna spread like wildfire because them not knowing is driving their perception that, oh, well, they're just here to take our jobs. Well, we're not, we're here to enhance what you already do and make your job even better by taking the things you don't wanna do already off your plate. 
So there has to be transparent communication, new kickoff calls, or if there's a new, let's see, EOSIS team assisting that client, a new, I call it a hybrid kickoff call, a new opportunity to push the reset button and letting everyone know who we are, understanding who they are, so that we can answer any burning questions on their mind. It is so important. And that's why I said earlier in our interview, communication is one of the key, one of the key elements that we have to have in place to have a successful practice and to have a successful relationship outsourcing. If we don't, we're going to cause all kinds of unfortunate headaches just because if you don't know what you don't know and you perceive it to be some way until you clear it up, truth is their perception until we prove otherwise. So we have to make sure that that there is consistent, constant communication, consistent checking in. So as the COO, when I get, uh, for instance, as an example, when I get an, e, an NPS score that comes in, the thing I go to immediately is, gee, I wonder how that relationship's going or how that balance promise checkup went last time, et cetera. So if there are inconsistencies there, then I'm at risk to also perceive that maybe there's something um, unfortunate going on in the, in the communication or the relationship. So I, I am of the opinion and have always for in my entire dental career, you can't communicate too much. You can't, you can't yeah. document too much and you can't communicate too much. So it's such an important part of that process and can be the one thing that removes a roadblock faster than anything. I love that. I absolutely agree. Um, I am a huge fan of communication and um, absolutely agree that, you know, if you, do outsource any of the services, um, or I should say the duties in your office that need to be performed on the, uh, a daily basis, that is, you need to communicate with that team just like if they were sitting across the desk from you or mm -hmm. in you know, the office down the hall. They're an extension of your team um, because they are all working towards the same goals, and that is ultimately the purpose is just to align everyone uh, with communication and um, constant checking in to make sure that everyone is always working towards yeah. the same goals for the office. You know, something that has everything to do with the relationship and nothing to do with the function of the job is getting to know the people that you're um, networking with personally. Do they have pets? Uh, do they like to vacation? Do they like the beach? If, as soon as you can find a personal connection, you will absolutely bring them into the conversation much more willingly. If it's all about business, you are always at risk for someone being suspicious of the conversation. Get to know them personally. Uh, that's what's going to bring an element of familiarity to the, and, and it's going to help them feel like you're part of the team when you're the outsourcing company. It's going to help them feel like, oh, well, there's a real person behind that, that phone or that headset. So get to know them personally. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. You know, that's what Erin Gregory does with ESS. She, she reached out to me and found out all kinds of things about me that she was able to put on Zulip. And now people know stuff about me that they can, you know, either coordinate with or have similar interests to, or even just get a good giggle, right? So, and I think the world needs to laugh a little more right now. So if we can get to know both parties, the, the um, outsourced company and the administrative team and that doctor more personally, you have a, the best chance at securing a long-term uh, relationship. Exactly. And we do that in our office already, um, right? We have those conversations with our teammates. Sometimes they're, they're work-related, but a lot of the times we get to know them and their spouses and their kids and their pets and what their goals are and what they're working towards, um, what they did on the weekends, things like that. It's really a very personable experience that creates um, a sense of team and enhances it. Um, week over week of just feeling like you all are all working towards the same goals and like each other on a personal level. It's a real bonding opportunity. Everybody's on the same page, both professionally and personally. That's a really, really yeah. combination. Yeah. Well, if we were speaking to all of the, which we are, <laughs> Speaking to all of the dental billing um, people out there in all across the United States, uh, what is one piece of guidance, Lois, that you would give to all of them? Wow, that's a big question, Amanda. 
<laughs> advice, the piece of guidance that I would give is, is um, don't give up, uh, nurture the relationship, be transparent, do a great job. And when something goes wrong, find a way to resolve it. That's great. And it makes a lot of sense coming from you from the introduction in the beginning. Don't give up is, you know, something you obviously live and coach every day um, because that is just part of your spirit. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's, it's in my DNA. Um, I'm not a giver upper and I love to have that glass be half full. I'm not, I'm not going to say I haven't had struggles in my life and in my work life and my personal life. Everybody does. Um, but when you can bond with another person or you can communicate in the most positive way to another person, anything is solvable. Nothing is unresolvable. It's resolvable on some wavelength or another. So, and I love the e-assist family. I love the e-assist culture. I love the family. Everybody struggles once in a while and that's okay. That's what makes us human. And be okay with that. Um, I, I love that the, the ESS core purpose is to deliver peace of mind and really help um, dental billers and front office staff everywhere uh, mm -hmm. from feeling overwhelmed, burnt out, and and really helping them feel like they are an invaluable part of the practice that is helping the practice to succeed because they are. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me. This was fantastic. And um, I think that everyone has gotten so much knowledge and, and information from you. And I hope that you will come back and do another episode with me sometime. Anytime, any place, Amanda. I would love to do it. Thank you, Lois. Thank you. Click subscribe now to never miss an episode and find us on Facebook to expand your network.